Father, we thank you for this time of sharing this opportunity, God, that you've given us yet once more and again to be able to experience the transformative power of your word. So as always, God, open up our hearts, uh, using our minds to be attentive, receptive, and most certainly responsive to your word. God, draw me nearer. Psalm 73 at 17. Till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then, look at your name and say, Then I understood their end. The Message Bible reads, Then I understood their final destiny. Then I understood therein. Verse number two says, but as for me, my foot had almost slipped. Y'all see that? Look at your neighbor and say, I almost slipped. You may be seated. I almost, I almost slipped. If, if we need a, a subtopic this morning, for those of you who need subtopics, we tag this text with the days of our lives. The days of our lives. The days of, of our lives. Amen. One of the crossroads that many of us find ourselves in is stuck between what we see and what God has already said what we know God to be able to do. We know of his capabilities, we know of his abilities, we know that God can do, but we struggle even in uh, the seasoned ages of our lives. We find ourselves struggling in areas that we feel as though we should have grown out of. And it's those times in our, in our particular context that we can see God's hands clearer because we develop a sense of, of, of entitlement. We think that we've grown above certain storms. We feel as though we've grown above 
uh, certain situations. We feel that we are a cut above certain obstacles in life. And as a reason, as a result, we feel as though some situations, some obstacles, God have reserved for amateurs, novices in church, because a person don't know as much Bible as you know, because a person does not quote as much Bible as you quote, because a person does not walk around with this big cross around their neck with Jesus still on the cross because do not parade around the parameters of your nearby proximity uh, with a WWJD sign plastered on their hat. And they don't uh, boast, if you will, whenever you ask them how you're doing and they can't help but speak to you in unknown tongues because they are holier than thou. You do have those folks even in your lives, on your job perhaps. Uh, that person is the person that's sitting right in your seat. Oftentimes, uh, will think that they are more than the average job. And it's those times, brothers and sisters, when we find ourselves caught between the proverbial rock and hard places in life, that God is able, can I teach this thing, y'all? God is able to get our attention to let us know that you are not exempt from any problems, any situations, any struggles, any hardships. You are not, just because you come to church three Sundays out of a month, does not mean you won't have problems. Just because, just because I've blessed you with a new car, blessed you with a new house, blessed you uh, beyond, beyond even your own capabilities does not mean you won't get a diagnosis from the doctor that you won't have to come and fall down on your knees and have a little talk with me. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not exempt. Well, here in the 73rd, if you will, Psalm, there is a brother by the name of Asaph. Asaph is a chief musician. Uh, Asaph was called, if you will, handpicked, pulled out, if you will, by one named David. David, David, brothers and sisters, handpicked this brother amongst a few others, if you will, to be a leader in the temple choir, in the tabernacle, the tabernacle choir, if you will. Uh, this brother by the name of Asaph had it going on. As a matter of fact, he was so, he had it so much going on that David thought enough, if you will, to put him over other folk. Come on, help me in here. Uh, you can only be a leader when you have other folk who are willing to follow you. Come on, help me in here. Uh, you can't call yourself a leader if when you turn around you have nobody looking at the way you walk, uh, listening to the way, come on, help me in here. And as a matter of fact, brothers and, brothers and sisters, uh, folk are more apt to watch what you do uh, than to listen to what you say. Uh, and this brother by the name of Asaph uh, has a problem. Uh, he's a chief musician. Uh, he has a relationship with God. Uh, he knows the Bible. Come on, help me in here. As a matter of fact, if my mother or my grandmother was standing right here, she would say he knows the Bible from quiver, quiver to quiver. Come on, help me in here. From Genesis to Revelation. Are you in here? And can I put a pin mark right here and chase this rabbit up? There are some folk in this, in this sanctuary. You know the Bible, but you don't know the author of the Bible. It's one thing to know what the Bible says, but it's another thing to know who wrote what the Bible says. Come on, help me in here. You can Bible talk, you can Bible talk all you want to, but you better have a relationship with that man named Jesus. That one who hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross. That one who stretched his arms wide, hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, gave up the ghost, look at your neighbor, and say, you better have a relationship with him. Care how much you think you know, you better have a relationship with him. Because as long as you're living in this world, the faith that you talk about will be oftentimes put in a testing situation. Okay, rewind, play, y'all ain't sitting there. Let me talk to this side. The faith that you've been talking about will oftentimes put you in a position where the very faith that you've been talking has now been in a position to be tested. Because a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. God can't trust you with some problems because he knows you're a tough tail and run. God can't trust you with some sickness. 
sicknesses because he know you will stop coming to church. God can't trust you with some ailment because he know when he delivers you, you ain't going to give him glory. And I wish I had about five kids, 15, 20, 25 folk in the building who can testify, here I am, Lord, send me. Ah, sit down, sit down, sit down. That's why God, that's why God cannot choose or pick everybody to suffer for him. Because many of us, we want the crown, but we don't want to carry the cross. Okay, rewind and play. We want the blessing but we don't want the burdens that come before the blessings. If Pastor Bird L. Cooper was standing right here, he would say Dawson in life and in the dictionary, wilderness always comes before wisdom. We might play y'all miss that. I said wilderness always comes before wisdom. Can I put it in your lap where you can reach it? You have to go through some things in order for God to take you to what he wants you to be. Because if you're not Never go through nothing. You won't pray like you need to pray. You won't worship like you need to worship. You won't listen the way you need to listen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I had to go through it in order to get to it. And so, and so, Psalm 73, this brother, Asaph, close opens up Psalm 73 and look at what he says keep your Bibles open because I ain't making it up he says truly God is stop y'all miss man y'all must have had too much fish yesterday he says truly God is and some of y'all can't shop right now because you've been too busy looking at your circumstance versus saying God is. Can I help? Can I call the roll real quick? God is my all in all. God is my way maker. God is my heart fixer. God is my mind regulator. God is food when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. Who's gonna pay your bills? God is. Who's gonna rock your God is? Look at your neighbor <laughs> and say, God is. Now look at another neighbor and say, That's all I need to know. Everything I've ever owned, everything I've liked to own, he's my chief cornerstone. So when everything else fails, guess where I can go, D? I can go to the rock. You need scripture. Who is this for his rock? His name is Jesus, the Son, the living God. Asaph, leader. Over the music, yeah, yeah. Levite, yes. leader, yes. chief musician, yeah. has prominence, has position, yeah. has prestige, yes, but he has a problem. <sighs> Rewind, play. ASAP, chief leader, has prominence, <laughs> uh, has prestige. Huh? But he has a problem. Good position, but he has a problem.